So this is the panel we're going to be installing today. This is ABC, American Building Components SL16. It's a 16 inch coverage panel. And as you can see here, you've got a nail flange where we'll be putting pancake head screws. Those are a low profile screw. Those will be hidden. I'm gonna show you how that works. After those screws are installed, the next panel will snap in place. And by that, you now have a concealed fastener roof. So let's get to it. All right, Dave, so here's our panel, SL16. Yep. We're gonna install this with the screw showing, right? Correct. So this is the hidden fastener snap lock panel by ABC, a fantastic roofing panel. And we have a couple of different ways, according to the installation manual, of finishing the end at the eave. Okay. What we're gonna do right now is show an exposed fastener finishing at the eave. Right. And before we get going, I just wanna talk a little bit about the starting of the panel. So when you're installing a metal roofing panel, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're starting square. And by starting square, I mean that your vertical lines are all running square to your eave. If the first panel is tilted a little bit, all the panels that come after are going to be tilting as well. So you'll want to do is you'll want to take a square on the leading edge of your roof and adjust the panel accordingly. We're going to show you that in a different video. So just keep that in mind. When you're starting the roof, you want to square off the edge and adjust your panel uh, if necessary. So for example, if this particular roof was off a little bit, let's say half an inch, I would tilt our panel a little bit so that we ran square starting with the first panel. So the first thing that we're going to do is clearly this panel is too long. When you're doing an exposed fastener eave installation, we want to be overhanging the eave by one and a half or two inches max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the measure and then I'm going to cut the panel to length and we'll come back and install it. I've got my tape up against the end wall. I've made a measure down to the edge of my eave trim. It's exactly 24 inches, and I'm gonna add an inch and a half to that measurement and cut my panel to length. So what we've got here is our panel. We know that our panel's too long, and we need to cut it to length. I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna make my marks on the reverse side. I had said that the measurement was 24 inches and that I needed to add an inch and a half to that. So I'm gonna make a mark down here at 25 and a half inches. I'm gonna do the same over here, 25 and a half inches. And using my square or, or, or a straight edge, I'm gonna join those two lines and that will be my cut line. So what we need to do here is we need to cut through the male and the female rib to get to the flat of the panel. So I've come up underneath. Everyone has slightly different ways of cutting the panel. I'm making just an opening so that I can get in there. And using my duckbill snips, which make a nice clean edge, I'm gonna come through the flat of the pan. You can see why I'm wearing gloves. Wearing gloves will save you a lot of cuts. And our last cut is the female rib here. And now we have our panel that's been cut to 25 and a half inches so that one and a half inches can overhang at the eave and we'll go back over to the mock-up and install it. So our eave trim has been installed. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install the panel that we've cut. So we cut this panel to length. It's 25 and a half inches long so that one and a half inches overhangs the eave. And between the eave trim and the underside of the panel, we're gonna apply one row of sealant tape. I'm gonna do it along the entire eave. What I'm doing is I'm going, I'm going through the center of the roof, 
And you can see here that it has a, a peel and stick backer on it. I'm just going to cut this off. Remove the backer. And there we have our tape seal. So now we're going to take our panel that's been cut to length. We're going to make sure that we're square to the eave of the roof so that all of our panels that get installed afterwards are straight. I'm going to put a screw in it to keep it steady before we install the screws along the face here. Along the fastening strip of the SL16, we always use the pancake head fastener. It's the low profile head that, make, that doesn't dimple the next panel when it comes up, which is very important. Spaced at 12 inches from fastener to fastener. You want to tighten them, but you don't want to over tighten them. You don't want to draw the panel down and put tension into the panel. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install exposed fasteners along the center of the pan. And we're going to make sure that when those fasteners go through, they thread the sealant tape beneath to provide for a watertight seal. So the screw that we're going to use in the center of the pan is a wood grip. This is our, this is our neoprene washer fastener. So this is the fastener that I'm going to use for the center of the pan. It's a painted fastener that matches the panel. And we're going to make sure that it threads the sealant tape beneath the panel. So you can see that I've, I've installed the fastener. I haven't over tightened it. If you over tighten the fastener, it squishes out the neoprene washer, which gets exposed to the sun. It dries out and cracks much faster. So here, we have the exposed fastener eave application. You can see that I've put three fasteners, one on each side and one in the middle. These fasteners are threading the tape seal that's beneath the panel. And then we're going to start installing the panels as we come along the roof. So we've installed the offset cleat, and what's left to do now is install the panel. As you've seen in previous videos, we will prepare the end of this panel by cutting up one inch and one inch, folding under, and removing these two ribs. That will allow us to install this panel clipped into the offset cleat, which makes for a true hidden fastener installation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend this panel under so that it can clip into the offset cleat, or it could clip over a drip edge. And I'm going to slide the hemming tool over. We're going to bend this under one inch. And you can see that I've done a true 180 degree bend. Now what I'm going to do is cut the male rib back a quarter of an inch so that if it is sticking past a little bit, it doesn't keep the next panel from coming up flush with the edge of the drip edge or of the cleat. Now this panel's ready for installation. So now that this panel's been prepared, it's had the one inch clip put on it. The ribs have been cut back flush. Now we can go ahead and install it by clipping it in to the offset cleat. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna slide it up. Now it's fully engaged. It's fully engaged with the offset cleat. I can see that it's flush here. And you'll see here that the panel is sitting back from the edge of the roof by half an inch. And we've done that on purpose. If we were to put the cleat flush with the edge of the roof, if there was any jog in these panels, when the homeowner was standing on the ground, they would look up and they would see these panels irregularly coming out and over the roof edge. So we've put it back half an inch and that'll save you a lot of trouble if your panels are jogging a little bit. Now that the panel's been installed, I've put a fastener through the nailing flange the last thing that needs to be done is you can see that it's sticking up here a little bit. We can come along with a, you can use a block of wood with a towel on it and a, ma a rubber mallet and you can have it, have it sit down so that it's nice and flat to the roof deck. Mm -hmm.